Hello, everyone. We are back with Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Or, should I say Phoenix Wright, seven years ago, all kinds of shit has happened. And somehow I think it's only gonna get worse from here. Very impressive, Mr. Wright. I have to say I expected nothing less. We've only just begun. Yeah, and you were no help. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Better that you discover the truth for yourself. I was thinking of you, you know. I think we need less thinking and more talking. That night in the hospital? What really happened? Ah, the way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. Don't hit on me now, this is not the time. You'll scare Trucy. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself, the letter. The one shot in the forehead. One, right? Yes, and the reason he speaks of. I could not deny my mentor's wishes even if it meant my own death. Why not? This is something I will not say for now at least. What's this for now business? I know, this is, this is no help. We've got no help. Like none. I have done many things in my life, some well, some poorly. But this is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. We? You want to know about the night of the incident? Finally! This guy sure likes to take his time getting to the important stuff. Of course. I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. Okay, okay, show. Show us. And found there upon his bedside table two pistols. Two? Yes, the one I had used on stage. And the one that had been used by my partner, Valent. I see. Oh, for the Zack and Valent's quick draw thing. Okay. My mentor had the look of one sleeping. I stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. Then I took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny that my resolve faltered then, for a moment. You faltered? You mean you thought about shooting him? Recall there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last such request, though not his first. So there were other requests you couldn't refuse before? To be honest, I have not always been steadfast, and I fear I've brought pain upon Trucy. Was Magnifi coercing his disciples somehow? Just what was going on in Troop Grammary? I don't know. This is weird. Yet, in the end, I did not shoot him. Instead, I turned and shot the clown. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. In your pocket? I believe if you examine the bullet in the clown's head, you will find it to be different than the one in my mentor. But... What were those called? Rifling marks? Yes. Well, that is all I have to tell you concerning the case. Concerning the case? You mean there's something else you can't tell me? Ha ha ha! You are a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, that, that's a help. Yes, there is something. My mentor? His eyes opened. What? Magnifi Grammary? The old devil, he was not asleep, you see. Of course, the gunshot would have woken him anyway. Exactly. Oh, Santa's up right and talking. Look at it. And there we had our last discussion as mentor and pupil. It was not a long discussion. Maybe five, ten minutes or so. What did you talk about? Thanks, Phoenix. Ha ha ha, Mr. Wright. Did I not just tell you? It does not concern the case. Zach Grammary, he seems pretty steadfast to me. Or maybe just stubborn. Mr. Wright, your presence is requested in the courtroom. Once again, I am in your hands. Right, let's get back in there. Great. Great! No, this is fan-fucking-tastic, actually. This, this couldn't be better. Oh, man. Well, one thing that is really interesting to me in this case, and I didn't mention it in the last one because I was just so gobsmacked at everything that was happening, is, like, I really do like how confident Phoenix appears here. It's really kind of different for him because, like, we've never really seen him that way. The other thing that's really strange to me is that for the first time ever playing Phoenix, we don't, like, have 
an assistant or anything. Like, there's, there's nobody here. I wonder why. I wonder if that ever gets explained. What's up, girl? During our recess, a bullet was found and dug out from the clown's head. Well, this is news. And the rifling marks? There wasn't time to do a detailed analysis. Well, how convenient. Because that would have proven. Though they did find the weapon type matches the murder weapon. Yeah, it could match the weapon, but it's not the actual gun's bullet. That's different. Well, that's not very conclusive, is it? Which is why I'm about to call my very decisive witness. I'm worried really now about who that is. <coughs> oh, let me just get the coughing out of the way now, because you know I'm about to cough. Your decisive witness? How many times have I heard those words? Though they often turn out to be far less decisive than you think. Oh, don't worry, on my account, I am quite confident this witness will do the job. After all, he is intimately acquainted with the players in our little production. Being the other half of Troop Glamoury's famous duo, Zack and Valent, I knew it. I knew it was Valent. Shit. Valent Glamoury. So, we get to meet the great Magnifi's other disciple. Here he is without the, yes. Tuxedo mask without the mask, okay. Perhaps we'll start by asking your name and occupation? Valent Grammary. Magician. Uh, and you're the decisive witness, are you? You can prove your fellow student, your partner's guilt? Fate. The grand illusion, filled with traps and tricks! Uh-huh. But why are you willing to sell your partner down the river is one thing I want to know. Wait, the shooting took place in the hospital after 11 o'clock that night. If you're a witness, does that mean you were there that late? If one were to deduce this logically, the conclusion is... Yes. Uh, okay. I always get the characters, don't I? Yes. Yes, you do. I have an interesting fact for you. You see, several days before the crime, my witness received this. What is it? That looks very familiar. Wait. That's the same letter Zach Grammary received. Yes, or perhaps I should say, ta-da! Oh my, I'm a girl! Damn, that hair, though! Did you see that? Good lord! Maybe it's Maybelline, I don't know. Order! And what does it say? Surely not the same thing. Perhaps you should see for yourself. To my beloved student, Valent, you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.20pm. I will ready a gun in which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. Cannot, <clears throat> excuse me. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. It's, yeah, it's practically, not word for word, but practically the same thing. The court accepts this into evidence. Great, so we got two letters now? Two letters. It's literally called two letters. This is most unusual. Exactly what was going on with you folks? What exactly was your troop grammar up to? By what you mean? I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask his students to kill him. Both of them, no less. It's just my opinion, Air Judge, but from these letters I'd say he was coercing them, not asking them. We walk the magician's path together and in so doing shed much of our lives. When people are so close, there is a strain, a warping of relations, you might say. Yet, this has nothing to do with the case at hand. Boy, these guys like to say that a lot, don't they? By which you mean you're not going to tell us, exactly. Which makes me wonder even more about the reason they couldn't refuse. Phoenix, you're not wrong. Well, let's get on with the testimony for starters. Here we go. The defendant, Zach Grammary, stands accused. Tell us why. Oh, I'll do more than that. For where he walks, the red roses rise, singing hymns to the miracle that is magic. Fascinating. Though I hardly need to remind you. That the evidence could just as clearly point to you as a subsub uh, suspect. Suspect. <laughs> oh god, I shouldn't do this so late. The letter, the murder weapon, and now the two bullets found at the scene. In fact, the only difference seems to be the designated time. <laughs> as every magician knows, timing is everything. Yes. And now it is time to get this party fired up. Let's do it. I'm ready. I'm so ready to party. The night of the crime. Tell me about it, please. 
That night I visited the hospital room at the time Magnafi requested. The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final blow. Bow. Sorry, that blow is completely different from bow. Different connotation entirely. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the same instructions, so they didn't know about the, the, the similar instructions at all, apparently. Yet, a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown. Then I informed the doctor and the police. So you're saying you shot the clown too? What? Well, somebody here is lying. So you were the one who reported it? Indeed. I would think this fact alone would clear my name of suspicion. No, it. believe me, it does not. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Yes, the cross-examination generally comes before the conclusions in the court. Well, sometimes. Sometimes we, we mess it up a little bit. Depends. But if your testimony proves to be true, then the defendant, Zach Grammary, is guilty. And if it wasn't Zach Grammary, then the killer was you, Valent. Oh boy. Either way, it's gonna be. F Either way, it's gonna be a mess, right? Either way. And no disappearing act will get you out of that. <laughs> or will it? Right. Alright, let's see. That night I visited the hospital room at the time Magnify requested. Okay, tell me about that. Which, according to the letter, was 11.20 p.m. Indeed. In magic, timing is everything. Right. Consider the illusion of teleportation. If I were to appear on stage before my stunt double had left, how would that look? Why, it would reveal the very secrets of my magic. Now that you've revealed the very secrets of your magic for all of us, let's move on. Thank you. You went to the designated time. What did you see? The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. Please explain exactly what that means. So, you weren't worried for your own safety at all? I mean, you smelled gunpowder, yes? What if the shooter was still nearby? What then? I... I did not consider this, to be honest. It is forbidden for a magician to have a good imagination. What? Uh, really? Isn't magic all about illusions and imagination? Yes? How about this? You were the shooter, which is why you weren't afraid. Oh, shit. How about that? No, you're the one imagining. It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good imagination. The witness will refrain from pausing so suspiciously before responding. <laughs> yeah, really. My forbidden imagination is starting to imagine things. No doubt. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the same instructions. Is that real, though? I think that's an important thing to find out. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it does, and my partner, he did not refuse. But Magnify wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zack couldn't? Because I have a will of steel, of course. I also do this trick where I bend steel bars, so perhaps steel isn't also strong. So which is it? Mind if I continue, I guess. Jesus. A deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown. What? There's no way both of you shot that thing. There were two bullet holes at the scene, one in the victim and one in the clown. You're saying the one who shot the clown was you? No doubt my partner Zack had said much the same thing. Yeah, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed murder. I'd better dig around here a bit more and see what I can turn up. Mr. Valent? Let me ask something else concerning the crime scene, namely... Okay, the bullet and the pistol, the location of the pistol, the number of pistols... Hey, we should probably ask about this, because we know. That's actually been shown to us, but nobody else has talked about it yet. Maybe that? I'm doing it. How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what, precisely? Um, excuse me? I think I made it kind of clear. Two pistols were used in the Zack and Valent quick draw shoot him, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room that night. What does Zack tell me back in the lobby? He said that he shot the clown and took one of the guns. Didn't he? So that means that he left one. Yeah, he had no intention of shooting his mentor. He snuck into the room that night at the appointed time and found there upon his bedside table two pistols. 
He took the pistol he had fired and placed it okay in his pocket. Right. Hmm. I see no problem with the statement. Only one pistol is visible in the photograph of the crime scene, after all. Yeah, but... Oh, how are we gonna be able to prove this, though? So, you picked up that pistol and fired it? Indeed I did. Alakazam, alakazing, alakaboom. Hmm. Is the number of pistols really so important? Well, I'm assuming yes, because it was one of the draws. I think it's important. Because we still have to figure out which bullet came from which gun. Can't we do that? The number of pistols is quite important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail to your testimony. Alright. What can I do but obey? Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night. With it, I shot the clown. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night. With it, I shot the clown. Uh-oh. Oh, oh! Wait, no, yes? Objection! You guys. According to the defendant, Zach Grammary, when he entered the room, there were two pistols on the table. Two? One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left with it in his pocket. Of course, this is what he would say. I knew he was going to say this. I knew. I knew this was going to be the thing. Unlike the hapless clown, we must assume our defendant had some brains in his head. Well, what about what Mr. Valen has told us? You see, there's something about his testimony that doesn't make sense. What might that be? I told you, I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. No, though. That's your story, at least. He didn't. But the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Valent. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullet were a perfect match. Yep. The gun that was left shot a bullet into that man's head. So you did not fire on the clown with that particular gun, sir. Sir. Mr. Valent, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that weave ain't gonna save you now, though. It ain't. Order, order! Well, this is all rather sudden. Objection. What? What you gonna object? You just helped me prove it! <laughs> what have I done? Prosecutor Gavin? I owe the court an apology. Sorry. Sorry for what? Oh no, here it come. If he tells me he messed it up and he was wrong. You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of the rifling marks only proved the type of gun that fired them. Oh, here we go. These tiny details, right? He's gonna stick it to us. But that's not what you told us before. You said you'd verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you now. Quite sincerely, I might add. Well then get his ass thrown out of court if you can't do shit correctly. Get out of here, boy. Would you hold me accountable for a mistake made in my youth? Oh, please. That was just this morning. I am still young. And I might add, it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime, we would not be having this pleasant discussion now. Oh, fan frickin' tastic of course. Of course it wouldn't be that easy. Valent Grammary? Yes, Your Honor. You were presented to this court as a decisive witness, but you've proven to be more <laughs> divisive than decisive. Yeah. Objection! Hello? What? What you mad about now? You'll see in time. What does that mean? The testimony so far has merely been a review of the facts. The proof comes next. Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? Then Mr. Valent entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. As his next testimony will prove, eh right? The real fight is about to begin. Bring it. Yeah, tell him, Phoenix, you drag him. Very well. The witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine who shot what. Alright, what's this? Who shot what? That's literally the name of it. Okay, fine. Let's have it. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is to say 11.20pm. 
After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation, then called the doctor. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. He was quite clear about the time of death. 11.10 p.m. What? And the one in the room at that time was my partner, not me. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Something there's definitely wrong. Those are times are rather close, you have to admit. You're talking about an alibi established over a matter of minutes. To use a ten minute discrepancy as the base of your alibi. It's easy to explain in this situation, Air Judge. For example, take our debut hit single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love. Don't shill your stuff here. It's wrong. Cue to the song, press the play button, it will play for 2 minutes 15 seconds. Do it a hundred times, the result is the same. Their debut single was only 2 minutes and 15 seconds long? What a ripoff! Magic is a world of utmost precision. Hocus Pocus requires admirable focus. And in the time of death determined by the doctor, there is an incontrovertible truth. Very well. The prosecution warns us that we're dealing with rather precise time. And we can expect the cross-examination to require the same level of precision. Oh, great. Well, shit. I would hope the defense refrains from its customarily broad sweeping accusations. Don't worry about it. I'll sweep what I want. Broadly. Lest we blur the focus this case so clearly demands. Point taken. Baseless remarks will result in a penalty. Oh, great. Carry on, Mr. Wright. I don't care. You can't- you can't scare me. I'm still gonna press everything. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm not- I'm not ditching my- my perfect way of doing things. Fine. I arrived in the hospital room at the appointed time, which is 11.20. Let's go. Don't care. 11.20 p.m. Can you prove that's when you arrived? Alas, such a feat may be beyond even the great Valent. For there was no one in the room but Magnify, and he was departed, after a fashion. I have here defendant Zach Grammary's sworn disposition. Deposition, sorry. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. It was ten minutes before I had left the room, and the victim was still alive. The time indicated by this letter to Zack was 11.05. Exactly. Which means the witness could not have entered that room before 11.15. Because his partner was still in the middle of his crime. I see someone did their arithmetic homework. You see, the defendant himself has corroborated the witness's testimony. Hmm. Does that all make sense? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it's gonna be one of these. I have to be careful what I press. It's fine. I don't see any problem with that testimony. If you say so. Let's continue, shall we? Sometimes the most magical thing of all... ...is the truth! Would you stop? Who cares? Jesus Christ, you look like a banana. After discovering the body, I fulfilled my obligation and then called in the doctor. I'm still pressing everything. Whether or not I get to, like, revamp it is... I don't know, but... I want to see what they say. I'm assuming something will stick out if it's wrong. You walk in on a murder and the first thing you do is shoot the clown? The disciple does what the disciple must. My mentor's request without reason had caused for me to surfeit of sorrow. For what would I, Valent, be now without him? May the soul of Magnify the Great find greater peace above. This I muttered to myself as I pulled the lonely trigger. Oh, for fuck's sake. In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right moments, Air Attorney. Don't worry about it. May I remind you that baseless remarks were on penalties. Proceed with that in mind. Oh shit, they're really warning me now. This is- this is a real pain, Phoenix. You are not wrong. The doctor examined the body before the police arrived. Can- I want to hear more about that. Did the doctor say anything concerning the cause of death? Why, yes. I believe he screamed, My God, he's been shot in the head! It doesn't take a doctor to notice that, I would have said the same thing. And I would have penned the requiem that arose in my soul at that horrid sight. Whatever happened to good old-fashioned investigation? Phoenix, I don't know. But I just don't even know what's going on. In any case, I believe this is nothing more than what we have already learned. I'm still waiting for one of those right- Oh, it's the same thing, actually. What are they waiting for? Well, I mean, I haven't earned a penalty yet, so... Oh, shit, maybe I should have pressed that first statement. Let's just keep going. Alright. 
He was quite clear about the time of death, 11, 10 p.m. This is where this is what gets me right here. Something's wrong here. I can't put. I know the times. I get what they said about the times, but this still seems way, way wrong. I don't think I'm stepping out on a limb to say I have some doubts about this. How could the doctor be so precise with the time? We do usually only get an estimated time of death, true. I'm not sure I've heard of a verified time of death. Yeah, the only time they can really tell is if the doctor's there. Like if they're having, you know, surgery or something, and then, you know, someone's monitor stops in the middle of surgery. They can time it at that point, but somebody has to be there. So who was there to give the time and how? Magic revels in making the complex appear simple, but reality is the opposite. What appears complex in this case is a simple matter of subtraction. I see another person has done their arithmetic homework. The point here is the IV the victim was taking. It's quite visible in the photograph of the scene. Yeah, what about it? Recall what we heard earlier about the victim Magnify Grammary's schedule. Every night at 11, Magnify took an IV drip for 30 minutes. I can see the IV bag right there, yes. Now, look a little closer. Follow the tube down from the bag to the end. It's not hooked up. Ah, the needle's been removed. Doubt the sleeve fell out when he was shot. I doubt it. Having had several IVs over the course of my life, even ones that weren't sewn in, they don't just fall out just like that. You've got to pull them out. You have to. That would seem to be the case. Anybody that put in an IV that just falls out, even from a jerk like a shoot to the head, did a terrible job. When the needle comes out, the IV no longer drips. Ah, you could just measure the remaining IV liquid. You could, but that's still... It's still not good enough. Because someone... It still looks like someone pulled that out. The IV liquid functions for our purpose as an hourglass of sorts. This is how the doctor determined the time of death. From the amount remaining in the bag, it was determined that. The IV had stopped ten minutes after administration began. Let me look at this. No, something's wrong here. And so it was. When I, Valent, entered the room... Hold that thought. Just, just hold on to it. IV stopped ten minutes after administration began. Thirty minutes required. From the amount remaining, IV stopped ten minutes after. Right. Okay. Like I said, I've had my share of IVs. Don't start. I've had them for many, many years. Ten minutes had passed since that horrible crime was committed. And this is proof. Not necessarily, though. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Hmm. Did that seem important? Well, yeah, I think at this point, very important. Well, seeing as how it is the biggest clue we have to the time of death, I'd say it's very important. Hmm, agreed. It would be hard to imagine a more precise way to determine the time. Behold the power of arithmetic! Is that like the power of the science? Very well. The witness will add this detail to his testimony. Sometimes the most magical thing of all... Don't say the truth! Oh! Why you gotta repeat yourself? Come on now! The water of life springs not eternal. The remaining IV liquid proves my innocence. Not necessarily, bro. I'm- no, I'm still harping on this. Something's wrong. Did you notice the IV yourself by any chance? When first I entered the room, the stench of gunpowder assailed me. Next, the mark of death upon my mentor's forehead. And then, his left arm did I spy, a rose drooping and wilted. Its thorn, the discarded IV needle. Knocked from the vein by the force of the shot, lucky for you. That would not have happened. I'm telling you guys now, it wouldn't have. Absolutely not. If that IV had not been there, why? You might be a suspect. No. 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 I'm not- I'm not buying any of this, guys. Not. I might say it's thanks to my lucky color. Your lucky color? Indeed. Even today I wear it proudly upon my suspect cell. For it always without fail brings me like what? Looking like a banana. Why, when Zack and Valent won their first Magician's Grand Prix, yes, the very one held by the Association of International Magicians, I was adorned in this attire then too, and our trophy a bust. Ah, 
What a day that was. I don't want to hear about your yellow ass bus. Come on now. Nobody cares. Thank you, Phoenix. No one cares. My lucky color, yes indeed, and that IV too. I say, I think twas huge, especially for me. What? It was green, is wasn't it? Wait a minute. What you talking about, boy? Shit ain't even yellow. Or maybe it is, because the <laughs> bag is blue. Probably if I start with that, that's what they're gonna say. That does seem to be the case indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, any thoughts on this testimony? Well, it's dumb. For one thing, can I say that? Mr. Valent sure looks happy with himself. How about this lucky color testimony? Am I- wait a minute. Am I actually supposed to do it? My first thought was it ain't yellow, it's green. Right? It's- all I'm gonna tell you is even if it was yellow in the bag and it turned green because of that, how the fuck would he have known? Wait a minute! Oh fuck, I'm going for it. Hold on to something. It certainly sounds like your lucky colors brought you plenty of luck. But not this time. Mr. Valent, your lucky colors betrayed you. I'm afraid you've lost me. Boy, haven't you ever seen that fucking Ziploc commercial? And I'll, I might not even be right about this myself, but have you guys ever seen that 80s Ziploc commercial <laughs> where they made the new seal that you could tell it was sealed because it changed color? The whole basis of the commercial was yellow and blue make green. It's sealed. Has anyone seen that before? The witness's testimony now clearly contradicts the evidence, but we'll talk about that later. What? Boy, I'm about to seal your Ziploc bag is what I'm telling you. Please recall my warning at the beginning of this cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Baseless accusations will be penal- Penalize me then, I don't give a fuck! I want to find out where this goes. I do hope this latest accusation is well-based. You're well-based. Don't worry, I've got all your base right here. Phoenix! Phoenix, that would have been funny 20 years ago. Come on, man. Well, I guess seven years ago. You're still late, though. Let's hear the defense's claim. Where is your evidence that contradicts what Mr. Valent has told us? It's gotta be in the photo, right? Yes? It's the photo. The crime scene tells all, your honor. The photo of the crime scene? All this talk of color has me yearning for black and white clear-cut simplicity. Well, I'm sorry, but we ain't playing Undertale, so you're gonna have to deal with it. Tell us our rights, just where's the contradiction in the photo? My pleasure, and I assure you, it's quite simple. But I can't promise anything in black and white. That's for Toby Fox to do. What do you gotta say, Mr. Wright? Where is it? What in this photo contradicts the witness's testimony? The- it's- look, I'm sorry, I- I am a little colorblind, but I know what looks like what, and that's green. It's gotta be. Right? Yeah. Here we go. Take that! See if I'm right. Valent Grammary, let's get one thing straight about your lucky color. It sucks. <laughs> it's yellow, yes? Kind of takes the mystery out of it, but yes. Something wrong with yellow, Mr. Wright? Yes, there is. Decisively wrong, in fact. Look at this photo of the crime scene. What's this? Confusion, doubt, tell us what do your elderly eyes spy? That's rude. Even my elderly eyes can see a problem here, Mr. Valen. Look at the IV bag. Oh! What is this? What foul magic! What, you mean colors? How do colors work? Is that what you're asking? It would be hard to call that IV liquid yellow. And I'm afraid no magic was involved in the taking of the photograph. Oh! Uh, Ala- Ala- Kaz- Whoa! <laughs> hey! Bunnies! The birds! Damn, girl, where was you hiding all them things? Order, order! What does this mean? Objection. Petting zoo in here now. This... This is some kind of mistake. Yes, Prosecutor Gavin. Your witness's mistake. Owned. Sit down, honey. You're about to get wrecked. The greener they are, the harder they fall. Wow, Phoenix, did you spend all night coming up with that? Damn, you must not got any sleep. I suppose there's no substitute for experience. Wow! It's really kind of cool seeing Phoenix like this, isn't it? That Grammary, as you reminded us several times. Your lucky color is yellow, but the IV is clearly not. B well This contradiction can only mean one thing. Objection. What? Shut up! Don't even 
say anything. And to think you almost had me. What do you mean? I see your true colors now, Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Something you'd like to tell us, Prosecutor Gavin? As far as this court can tell, the witness's testimony does contradict the evidence. Ah, <laughs> yes. A contradiction. One that I shall be pleased to hand right back to Mr. Wright. How do you mean? How? Because the witness has made no mistakes. I agree at a glance the Ivy- Oh no, he's gonna do it. He's actually gonna do it, isn't he? He's gonna fucking do it. Is he actually gonna come up here in front of my- He's gonna- You're gonna do this. You're gonna come up here in front of the court and my salad and tell me that yellow and blue make green. You're gonna come tell me that. Don't even do it. But I assure you the liquid itself is quite yellow. How did he know, though? How did he know? Unless he put that shit in the bag himself. Don't give me this. No, come on, man. As far as I can tell from this photo, it's green. Yes, but what color is the IV bag? No. No! I'm about to get real mad. The bag? You mean the plastic bag on the hook? Hmm, it looks like a... I want to say light blue. Precisely! Figured it out yet? Put a yellow liquid in a blue bag and... No. You get green. <laughs> Zip lock! This incidentally is the liquid's true color, but how did he know? How did he know though? Your explanation does have a ring of truth to it. Oh, I'm about to shoot this whole court up. I'm serious. Th this is ridiculous. Phoenix, help. As I thought. There's no substitute for experienced prosecutor Gavin. Yes! Get him! What? You may tell a good tale, but you've just proven something rather grave. For you, that is. G grave The liquid in the IV is yellow, yes. But how did this witness know? Thank. You. Jesus. Because I was about to get so angry if they let that slide. It's quite unnatural when you think about it. You did think about it, didn't you? Phoenix! Fuck! Yeah, get him! Get him! Uh, Man, that boy is no Edgeworth. Can we just agree? Phoenix be missing his boy. Your Honor, the defense requests an explanation from the witness. Edgeworth would not have fucked this up, even on his first trial. At the scene of the crime, the ivy liquid appears to be green. So, let me ask, how did the witness know the ivy liquid was actually yellow? Oh, Alakaz- oh my god! Oh my- that is what I'm going to name this- this video. Alakazoma God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Order, order. Mr. Wright, you'll explain this at once. Again, let me explain colors to everybody. The witness clearly knew the color of the IV liquid, so I'm sure it means something, but what? I can think of only one possibility, Your Honor. The witness, Valent Grammary, has testified that the IV liquid was yellow because... Okay, it looked yellow. He'd seen it before. He knew the IVs. No, it has to be he'd seen it before. He knew. From the facts before us, the answer is clear. The witness knew the IV liquid was yellow. Why? Because he'd seen it before. But not inside the blue bag we see in the photo. He saw the liquid by itself in a clear colorless bag. Because he peed in it. And that's how the guy died. Awful. It's terrible. Why you gotta pee in someone's death bag? Don't do that! I suppose he would have had to, but I'm still not clear as to what that means. Ask yourself, why would he know if he didn't work at a hospital? That's where you'll find your meaning, Your Honor. Objection! Oh no. I'm afraid I find nothing. So what if he knew the IV liquid's color? Leave the getting excited over absolutely nothing to our teeny bopper fans, yeah? Objection! Would you stop with that? The IV liquid is the only evidence proving the time of death. A 30-minute hourglass with 20 minutes worth of sand remaining. Your claim, Prosecutor Gavin. I remember it well. However, there's a critical difference between an hourglass and an IV bag. Wait, I know! An hourglass uses sand, but an IV bag uses liquid. I'm right, right? Y yes you're right Everyone clap for the judge. <laughs> as much as it pains me to say this, Your Honor, no. Unlike the sands through an hourglass, IV liquid enters the patient's body. Nice Days of Our Lives reference, by the way. At which point, like magic, it disappears. 
However, what if the amount of IV liquid had increased? Oh no! Oh no, I know. Yup. You couldn't tell, could you? After all, there's no way of knowing how much went in. Oh, I understand. I think I understand. Let me get this straight, alright? Nothing straight about you. You're saying the witness watered down the, the victim's IV bag? No. Not with water, but with IV liquid. That's how you knew the IV liquid was yellow. Now wait, 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 I said wait! How might an amateur such as myself essay to perform such a task? I'm an amateur too, but I can pour water into a cup. Can you though, Phoenix? It's very impressive. I'm afraid there's a big difference between a cup and an IV bag. Quite. Can you prove our witness is capable of such a feat? Hmm, he has a point, amateurs. <laughs> I at least would have some difficulty pouring IV liquid into a bag. He didn't... He didn't pour it. You know how they usually sometimes supplement that? I'll tell you how, and we've got it in the court record, actually. He added liquid to that IV to throw off the time of death. I tire of these fairy tales lacking evidence. Well, Mr. Wright, any solid evidence to bring us back down to Earth? Valent Grammary, I'm afraid your magic won't serve you well in a life of crime. Might I ask what you're strongly suggesting? Magic relies on props, and props become evidence. Our witness was certainly able to increase the amount of ivy liquid in the bag. All he had to do was work a little magic, and the prop was dun dun dun. This is how you do it. If you've ever seen people do it, this is what they do. Sometimes they have to supplement an IV bag with something or whatever it, you can syringe it in. Has been washed and shows no sign of use. Boom. <laughs> Sit the hell down. The victim's syringe. It's the perfect prop for the magically increasing IV trick. And easy enough for an amateur to use. Objective. What? What you gonna say? What kind of evidence is that? The syringe was clean, not a trace of liquid in it. Objective. So? Don't you start with me. And don't you find that odd, Prosecutor Gavin? See, I knew that when we first looked at that IV in the last one that it had already been plunged. Like I said, it's been used. The victim had the syringe to administer his insulin shots. There should have been traces of insulin left inside, that too. Well, Valent Grammary, as you pointed out yourself, the IV liquid makes the perfect clock. One that you could manipulate at will. A la coo Here come the animals! Yay, there they are! Aw, oh, bless, look at them. You better free them. You got a lot of them under there. Someone's in some trouble today. I do believe, well, with this being his first, that the burden of this trial has been a bit too much for Bear for Prosecutor Gavin. <laughs> He's fine. What, are you gonna chicken out now? I'm afraid that while there is a doubt as to the amount of IV liquid in the bag, the time of death cannot be proven. And that brings our trial to a close for today. Well, maybe I can squeeze an extra day out of this. I can do a little much-needed investigation work. Is that it? I see there are no objections. Court is a j Ugh. What you gonna do, boy? <laughs> Truly, there's no substitute for experience. Nothing blinds one to the truth so effectively. What's he up to now? A word to the wise. Underestimate the young and they'll sweep your feet out from under you. In a way you never ever expected. Are you coming on to me? Because I gotta tell you, I was thinking about it, but your attitude sucks. Alright, there I said it. You might be good for someone like Apollo, but Phoenix has standards and you do not meet up to them. You see, I know exactly what you're thinking. No, you don't. What's he talking about? You say the witness used the syringe to manipulate the level of IV liquid, but there is no proof. There's no proof he didn't do it either. Yes, quite true. Huh? He's admitting it? Nor was this witness quite as decisive as I'd hoped. This I admit, after all, why linger in the past when the future holds so much? You have something in mind, Prosecutor Gavin? Proof, Er Judge, I have another way to prove my case. With evidence, no less. What's this? This is the victim Magnifi Grammary's diary. Diary? 
After going into the hospital, Magnify began writing his memoirs, it seems. How come this is just fucking showing up now, though? No way. I call bullshit. The story of his birth, his startling debut, and the meeting of his disciples. It seems he intended for the last chapter to end. Quite appropriately with his death. Wait, that book doesn't say what the reason was, does it? The reason why his disciples couldn't refuse his last request? Sadly, it does not. What's important here is on the last page. Apparently, the victim wrote his journal that night, even after the ivy had begun at 11, at 11, sorry. Let's read it, shall we? Oh no, here we go, what is this? Tonight's ivy is in, maybe the last. I leave the rest to them. The first should come soon. The journal may end here or it may go on, but not long. That depends on his hand. All that is left to is something I can't see because- oh, but there's obviously a page written, like, ripped out. This does appear to have been written just before his death. All that's left to do is lay down the pen, as I think is what it said. We can, hopefully we can read that. But there's a page- there's a page right after that ripped out. Did no one's gonna say anything about that, I bet. The court accepts this into evidence. I need to look at that. <sighs> read the very last part with particular care. Fine, hang on to a second, because I'm gonna do it. Oh wait, no, I wanna- yeah, I wanna check it. Can I check it? Can I open it? How- how do I- how do I do this? Oh, okay. They could've just shown me the page! This is the last page. The diary ends here- Look! You can even see that something was written on that last page that was ripped out! Is everyone here blind? Huh? What's this? It looks like a page was ripped out. Well now, isn't that interesting? Yes! Alright. Fine. I read it. How come no one how come no one noticed it? This journal may end here or it may go on, but not long. That depends on his hand. Of course, by his He refers to our defendant Zach Grammary. That would make sense. No, it could refer to either of them. He was the first scheduled visitor after all. But look at what he said before that. This journal may end here or it may go on. It may go on. Magnify Grammary intended to write again. That is. If Zach Grammary didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, but are you an idiot? You can see that a page has been ripped out. I see the defense understands the meaning of this. The victim's diary does not go on, it ends. Hang on a fucking minute. Oh my god. Guess where the last notebook page is, guys? In my fucking hand. Just took me a second to get it. Oh, these people. Really? Because Magnify's life was brought to an end by the defendant, Zach Grammary. <sighs> Here we go. Order, order. Prosecutor Gavin. Are you certain that Magnify Grammary wrote this? There's no mistaking his handwriting. Well, this does seem to be significant. According to this, Magnify did intend to continue his diary. Yet if his diary ended here, which plainly it did- Oh my god, are you guys all idiots? Ah! Oh! Try not to scream. Then the one who pulled the trigger was the first visitor, Zach Grammary. Well, how do you like me now, Air Right? I- No. Bye. Come back to me in seven years when you've grown your hair and grown up a little. Alright. Still too green for your taste? Yes. Too stupid. He's right about the diary being pretty clear still. I find it hard to believe that he'd overlook such an obvious problem with his precious evidence. I can't believe. Well, Mr. Wright, the witness's testimony we heard was lacking. But, put together with this evidence, it seems quite sufficient for a case. If the diary is accepted like this, the trial's over. Maybe it's time for me to show them something. Yep, we're doing it. I'm left with no choice but to show my own evidence. What? You have some evidence that overturns this diary? Hmm. It's not too late to rethink this and avoid more embarrassment. Very well, please show us your evidence, Mr. Wright. Oh boy. Here we go. Incidentally, don't even think of showing us this diary I've just shown in the court. Why would I do that? Now that we've come this far, I hope you have something a little more decisive. 
Show us evidence that proves the victim continued writing in his diary. All right, I'd be happy to. The decisive evidence proving that the diary didn't end with this page is the notebook page. Yeah. Yep. Do it. First, take a look at this diary. Note that a page has clearly been ripped out. What's this? I hadn't noticed that at all. Yeah, no shit. That's why we're still here talking about it. As it just so happens, I have here what I believe to be the missing page. I look- I don't believe it. Looking at this page, it's hard to imagine that the first visitor that night shot Magnifique Grammarie. That's the defense's position. Wait, wait, let me see that. Oh boy. What in Sam Hill? Why, this is the continuation of the victim's diary. Uh oh, wait a minute now. Oh boy. Note the torn edge of the page. It's a perfect match with the torn remains of the last page in Magnifique's diary. Quite remarkable. Would you care to explain what all this means, Air Attorney? The diary continued after his first visitor came, which means that the victim was still alive after Zach Grammary left, leaving no one to take his life but the second visitor. Valent Grammary. No. No! You let all those animals go because he's going to jail. The handwriting too matches that on the other pages. This is without a doubt the genuine article. Order, order, order! But wait, this is- that's impossible! Oh no, wait a minute now. Is this it? Is this what we- Guys, I don't want to say anything to spoil it, but... Did we actually- Was that part the forged evidence? It was very... Weird that we had it. And Zack also said that it was impossible for us to lose with the evidence he had. Uh-oh. That old man couldn't have written that. Objection! What? Finally. You just couldn't resist, could you? All right. Resist what? Presenting solid evidence? Oh no. Did... By winning, did we just... Yes, Prosecutor Gavin? Might I request we put the current cross-examination on hold? The prosecution would like to call a new witness. But, Prosecutor Gavin? This evidence overturns the current witnesses- I ask only to put it on hold. Please. My new witness has a very, very important piece of testimony to give. Five minutes. No more. I promise. Your Honor. He knows. He must! Well, if you'd like to put it that way, Mr. Wright, what's your take on it? I don't think we have a choice. Well, Your Honor, judging from his enthusiasm, we'll have to hear this new testimony sooner or later anyway. So it might as well be sooner. Then, though this is highly, highly irregular, we will put the current cross-examination on hold. The witness may step down. Now, Prosecutor Gavin, please bring the surprise witness to the courtroom. What's happening? I had a bad feeling just then. He knows. That ripped out page was too obvious. He must have known. It's not real. And I should have known it was a bad sign all around. Oh no! Really? Holding a trial with no audience is a first, even for me, Prosecutor Gavin. I beg the court's understanding. But I had to make a judiciary deal with the witness to secure his testimony. A judiciary deal? The details of his testimony may have some legal ramifications, shall we say. Wow, so they cleared out the courtroom and everything. I thought it best to contain the information to the room. Hmm, very well. And you are the witness, I gather. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. State your name and occupation for the record. Um, my name's Drew Misham. I'm a painter. A painter? And you are somehow related to the case? 
No, well, not per se. I have one simple question for this witness. Mr. Misham, was it? Do you know what this is? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I know it well. How is that possible? Have you seen this diary page somewhere before? Oh, yeah, I mean, I made it. You what? You made it? Yes. You might call it one of my works. The regional prosecutor's office received a tip-off yesterday. Illegal evidence has been prepared for the trial of Zach Lamory. Illegal evidence? I initiated an investigation and found this witness. A painter to the world at large, Drew Misham has another side, you might say. Here it is. This is how it all happened. And Zack gave us that paper. So it's technically his fault. Phoenix didn't obviously know that it was going to happen. He didn't go looking for it. He is skilled in making perfect reproductions of certain things. Forgeries, in other words. Forgeries! Well, so we are to understand that this page here is a fake prepared by a certain defense attorney. Objection! I didn't do that. My, my my guy gave it to me. Hold it. I didn't prepare this evidence. Objection! Ah, the attorney speaks. Something about this page, I presume, but what is he saying? It makes no sense. After all, it was you who presented the evidence to us, Phoenix, right? Phoenix... Just throw Zack under the bus at this point. Who cares? Witness, uh, Mr. Misham, was it? Who requested this forgery? Who was your client? That... I don't know. What? Most of my clients prefer to remain anonymous, uh, even to me. I make the items they want and receive my payment. That's the extent of my contact with them. Now, Phoenix didn't do it, did he? No, but... There's no proof this is a fake. It's a fake. Huh? To avoid just this sort of problem, I always put a special mark on my works. I can say without a doubt, this is mine. Oh no. Oh no. Mr. Wright, you've just presented illegal evidence to the court. My court. Oh, Phoenix. It was careless of me. But it wasn't his fault. That's all I can say. Trucy gave it to us. Yup. Trucy gave it to us and she said she didn't know where it came from. She just got it from somebody. I told him to give it to you. He was set up. He was set up. Unbelievable. It was all a trap. A fatal trap. No wonder Phoenix couldn't come back from this shit. Did he ever find out who set him up? Probably not. Mr. Wright? Yes. Do you have an explanation for yourself? If I did, would the court hear it? Probably not. Forging evidence is a serious crime. And presenting it in court, a serious mistake. A fatal mistake for an attorney. Fatal, too, perhaps for your client, I fear. Well, they're good. They were the ones that fucking gave it to me. Well, maybe they weren't. I don't know. But they probably were. Tell me, what kind of defendant relies on forged evidence? The answer is quite clear. A guilty one. Shut up! You do not even know me, so don't act like you do. Your Honor, wait. I understand that presenting forged evidence in court is a serious crime, but you cannot hold my client responsible for actions I undertook as an individual. I am sorry, Mr. Wright. Your Honor. Another close call, I dare say. If the prosecutor's office hadn't received that hot tip, everything would have gone the way you wanted it to, yeah? I even gave you a chance. Too bad you decided not to think before embarrassing yourself. Wow, yeah. Holy shit. I see no further discussion for this matter. Special witnesses dismissed. Bye. I think we're dismissed too, permanently. Mr. Attorney? Yes. Could I ask your name? Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright. I have seen and studied many people, but none like you. I'll remember you, Mr. Wright. 
Okay. Thanks. Oh boy. Though I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way. This trial is over. Don't look so smug, you in trouble. I mean, we don't even know if he sent it or not, if Zack has anything to do with it. If, if he doesn't, then who the fuck gave it to Trucy? You have the right to find a new attorney and make an appeal. However, this court must. Ah, your honor? Yes, Mr. Zack? There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. It is impossible. Oh, no. I'm afraid the defendant is quite mistaken. I most certainly have the authority to declare a verdict on you. Except... Tell me, how do you plan on announcing your verdict? When your defendant does not exist. Doesn't exist? What are you talking about? I am talking... About this... What the... Mr. Enigmar? The defendant's escaped. Find him, quick! Bailiff, close all exits from the building. Did he just perform a fucking poofy magic trick and get the hell out? What? On the double, he must not be allowed to escape. Are you shitting me? That day in that courtroom, a miracle occurred. The defendant, Shady Enigmar, aka Zach Grammary, did not just escape from court. He literally unbelievably vanished. Right before the bailiff's eyes. No one ever saw him again. Not since that day. This is the Grammary Miracle! Oh, 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 oh my... He just left Phoenix there like that! That's why he said it was impossible, so maybe he did set up the forged evidence. Who knows? No verdict was declared. After all, the defendant didn't exist. That's how it happened. The trial of magician Zach Grammary vanished along with him for all eternity. The mysteries that remained behind were all solved, however, but not until seven years later. Oh. My. God. Holy crap! Guys. Well, here's your long episode that I promised you. In the next one? I don't know. I don't know. Jesus Christ. I guess we'll have to see. Thanks for watching. Oh my god.